I make these videos in increments of five minutes and so as the first one's uploading I'm uh, watching it and um, sometimes I hear myself make uh, mistakes. In the uh, initial part of this problem here, I need to just go ahead and mention this. I think I said this was uh, the perimeter, right? But the 121 obviously is the area of the rectangle. Sorry about that. Let's get back down to where we were at. So we found W, and of course we're going to be using the uh, positive part of this. And we can break this down a little bit more. The square root of 121, if I remember back from uh, fourth grade, this is 11. All right, this is 11. 11 squared is 121. Well, we found our W, and now what we're going to need to do is find L. So let's go up here remind ourselves what that uh, relationship is and here's the relationship right here so we have L is equal to 121 over W L is equal to 121 over and we said that W was L and of course that is 11 right. so we know now what uh, our dimensions are the width is 11 and the length is 11 and of course this uh, picture is definitely not to scale All right, so if the width is 11 and the uh, length is 11 this is going to be a square here it's going to be a square and of course I mentioned uh, symmetry in the last problem by just looking at our equations we should be able to pretty much tell that both of our values our length and our width are going to be the same, are going to be equal. All right. I think that's going to pretty much do it for these uh, rectangle problems. Um, we're going to move on to uh, something else a little bit uh, different. But uh, I'm going to have tons of uh, optimization, these optimization, these type of optimization problems, application problems, enough to definitely get you to understand how to solve these types of problems and some of them are going to be pretty darn difficult but just hang in there we start with you know they all follow the exact same uh, basic uh, format um, where we have we have a primary equation that we're going to take the derivative of and we have some constraints or I guess I should say secondary equations in this particular case we only have one okay but uh, you know the real trick is going to be constructing we're gonna to have to construct use a different color here you know this is where the difficulty starts to come in is we're gonna to have to actually construct these and we're not going to be given these nice uh, formulas that we've known uh, from the past we might actually construct our own so that's going to be the difficulty part is constructing these things and uh, and then moving moving from there but you know once you construct them like I said you forget the calculus you can always uh, plug the stuff into a graphing uh, calculator or something and at least get an approximation and pretty much in the real world um, that's what pretty much goes on but uh, you know there was actually since I've got a little bit of time left let's get down here to uh, this guy here and let's actually graph this. Let's make sure our solutions are correct, even though, you know, I know they are. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and just graph this and see what we get for W and even our perimeter, I suppose. So let's just do that. All right, so anyway, we're just seeing a piece of this graph right here um, after I'm graphing the perimeter with respect to W. And I don't know if you can see this or not. What is this, 12? or let's see um, increments of looks like maybe seven or eight eight sixteen yeah okay so this is eight and remember eleven was uh, was our W okay so the minimums occurring here at uh, at eleven as you can see and then of course you could run straight across and see actually what that uh,